It is that time of the week again. It's time to declutter some more Christmas decorations. Last week, we went into the Christmas cave so that we can pull all the Christmas bins out and do a huge Kamari method on all of our decorations. And we pulled all the bins out except for the Christmas tree, the outdoor decorations, and the kids' stuff. But we have all these bins laid out in front of us, and we're going to continue chopping away, going through the bins, recognizing what we're going to keep and what we're going to declutter. Now, last week, we went through the first couple sets of bins and we were able to declutter a lot. And I think I'm going to continue working on this end. And I believe Ms. Pepper has picked out our first bin that we're going to go through. So it looks like our little girl chose something that was more sentimental because this is an ornament bin. But this is actually really good because I wanted to talk about emotional decluttering. Now, of course, I'm not gonna declutter my Brandon hand ornament that I made in 2013 because it's just too sentimental to me. And since I have hoarding disorder, everything in my past was sentimental to me because it was my coping mechanism for the stresses of life. And over time, I learned how to declutter emotionally because right now, this ornament and this one over here, I don't feel emotionally attached to. So I'm going to let that go. Every decision that I make when I'm decluttering is an emotional one, not a logical decision. Now, Peppy can get rid of stuff logically <laughs> because we're letting go of these three ornaments, but I still have to make these decisions emotionally so that I can be successful. And this is how I'm successful with the ornaments. These are my ornaments that I am keeping so that I can move forward. To emotionally declutter, you simply just be very mindful of the emotions being triggered as you pick up an item to decide if you're going to keep or declutter it. If the item is triggering an emotion within me, I recognize it to see where is it stemming from? And why am I feeling like this? My childhood stuff normally triggers emotions of pure happiness, nostalgia, a time in my life when innocence and creativity and imaginary dreams came to life. So that's why I treasure those items the most. And by us organizing them into special bins, has calmed my nervous system down because I know that my core favorite items are saved and organized into a bin. Now, Christmas can be very sentimental too, but I'm using this internal scale of, okay, am I feeling emotionally attached to it? Or am I not feeling emotionally attached to it? This internal scale that I have, I rate from zero to 10. Zero being I feel no attachment and 10 being I am so deeply sentimentally, emotionally attached to this. And by recognizing where on the scale I'm feeling emotions to an item, I already know how my nervous system is going to react. If the item is registering between zero to two, I know that my nervous system is not going to be triggered and I can very easily let the item go. If the item registers between an eight and a 10, I know that my nervous system is going to set all the alarms off immediately. So I don't even make the decision. We're going to keep it and we're organizing those items too. Anything between a three and a seven, we have to evaluate it a little deeper into thinking, why am I feeling this emotion to it? Now, as I did this bin, that's exactly what I did. And I'm very happy to say that most of the items in this bin was registering between a zero and a two. So we can let a lot of this stuff go. Now that we have those bins complete, we're going to move on to the next row. And I'm going to grab the bag that's on top of here. And yes, I do see the insulation and hubby will be fixing it very soon. 
But in this bag is random Christmas stuff that I wore last year. And I need to put it back with the costume Christmas dress up bit. It's so important that I keep like categories with like categories. And that's exactly what Marie Kondo does is that she keeps like with like, she has you go through the different categories and then see what sparks joy and what does not. And of course, Christmas dress up is going to get its own category because I love wearing all the festive hats, the shirts, the leggings, the sweaters, I'm very much into this. So we're just going to make sure that we're condensing everything down into this bin. Now I'm going to be using that emotional scale to rate how I feel. And this is like a zero one. I really don't have any attachment to these premier hats because they were given out at a Christmas festival. Now my Christmas leggings, they're gonna be up there in the eight to 10 category. So there's no need to force myself to let them go. Plus I wear them for all the Christmas events anyway. So they're going to be used. So you can use logic in it too. And also these light up antlers that were given out at another Christmas tree lighting. We can let that go. That's about a two. Same with this shirt. This shirt is a two, but I also already have my favorite Christmas items for my kids saved. And right now I'm just gonna fold and reorganize everything into this bin. That way it's all contained in here. So now I'm going to continue on this stack of bins over here, seeing what treasures await us. And right on the top are brand new snow globes. Now, yes, I did buy these two from Target last year in 2021 because I wanted to make a cute project out of them. And I did not have a chance to do that. So this is motivating me to make sure that I do it this year. Now this right here is registering at about a solid five because it's pretty, it's beaded, it is making me happy. But the truth is that I have not used it in at least three years. So this is an opportunity to dive a little deeper into those feelings so that I can keep my nervous system regulated. And what I'm asking myself when I'm anywhere between that three to seven mark is, what is triggering this emotion that I feel the need that I absolutely have to hold on to it? Can this be something deeper like unprocessed trauma or I'm feeling very stressed in my life right now and I feel the need to hold on to this item so I can self-regulate myself and not go into a panic attack? It might have nothing to do with the item itself. And that's when we take the time to address the root emotion of why we're holding on to it. The example I'm going to use is when I was badly bullied as a kid and I had hoarding and my stuff to self-soothe. It made me feel worthy and happy in my authentic self. So the reason why I'm holding on to this item is not because I'm going to use it, it's because I attached an emotion of being worthy and happy and beautiful and all those feel-good emotions to the item instead of myself. So now to regulate my nervous system, I take that time to say that you are no longer that 11-year-old girl who got badly bullied by the other children. You are worthy. You are beautiful. You are a good person. Tell yourself that none of those things are happening now. That was in the past by children who were probably going through their own hurdles and struggles in life. That's how you start to self-soothe your nervous system so that you can release those emotions and in turn make decluttering a positive experience because you've now separated those emotions to the item. And over time, as you consistently work through this, those items that you had very strong attachments to, suddenly that emotion just disappears and you'll be able to have bigger and better tossy tossy piles without the regret because there's no emotion attached to it. And this is our tossy tossy pile for this episode. It is a lot. We are getting rid of so much. And in my past, there was no way that I could get rid of all of this at one time, especially Christmas before. 
But because I've been emotionally decluttering over the years, you've seen the healing, you've seen the changes, you've seen that I'm able to let go of more stuff in one time. And Ms. Pepper also wants to show you that we emptied out a large Christmas tub this episode too. This is amazing progress. I also wanted to share that emotional decluttering is not just for people with hoarding disorder. It's for everyone. Everyone attaches emotions to their items. It's just how many items are you attaching these emotions to? Now, I want to show you really quick that I put these little post-it check marks on just so I know what we already went through because each and every week, we're going to be continuing to declutter the Christmas decorations until we've gone through every single bin. And my hope and my prayer is that this video motivated and encouraged you to declutter and clean something in your home today too.